Sparky Zero is officially three days away from early access and with everything that's been portrayed on media and all the trailers that we've seen over time, the question now is, are you prepared? See now, if I were asked that question, my response would be, hell no. I'm nowhere near prepared for this game at all. If you ask me, I'm still chilling back at the Kame house. I'm chilling at shore with my friends, shadow boxing and stuff, thinking I'm the man. And little do I know that two aliens are about to come and invade my planet, abduct my son, and cost me my life. Yeah, that's where I'm at in terms of the Dragon Ball story right now, guys. But is all of that really important? And I'm gonna be honest with you guys and give you my thoughts here. I don't think it is. You know, I see a lot of people saying, oh, they've been playing Budokai Tenkaichi 3 to prepare for Sparky Zero. And you know, just learning a whole bunch of mechanics and this and that. And listen, that's great. But you're honestly wasting your time because if you look at what Sparky Zero is and when it is coming out, there is no way that this game is going to be a one-to-one -one from the last Budokai Tenkaichi 3 to this new Sparky Zero game we're about to get. You know, there's been people like Glopku and Sierrax who said, yeah, the game is pretty much similar along to what Budokai Tenkaichi is, but there's certain things that could be a little bit different from the regular games and then you have the pro Tenkaichi players who say it's not like it at all so it's a whole bunch of mixed reviews about what it is and what the game feels like but truth is we're not gonna know until the game actually releases so we're all about to find out the answer to that at the same time and just going back to what I was saying I mean listen if you want to go on Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and just play it for you know nostalgic reasons just remember what it's like to be playing Purukai Tenkaichi once again just to hype you up for the new Sparky Zero game that's coming then I think you're doing that right but if you're going on that game and just sweating your ass off every night to learn all these combos and learn all these things to have it prepared and know about it before the actual game releases, like I said, you're wasting your time. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 released in 2007. That is over 15 years ago, guys. And if I'm being honest, yes, you know, it's continuing the Tenkaichi series. You want it to have its native features, its basic uh, Tenkaichi guideline of like what makes a Tenkaichi. But 15 years ago, right? I don't want what was 15 years ago in this new game right now, especially if I'm dropping over $100 on this. I want a new feeling. I want an actual new game. And that's why I think Sparking Zero is going to be such a great game because it's just bringing a whole bunch of new things and just taking all the new gen features that are around us and making it, you know, the best Dragon Ball game that we could be getting right now in the modern era. And let's just say, for whatever reason, it was a one-to-one -one game, right? Well, number one, you'd be pretty upset about the money that you spent. And number two, all that practicing, right, there's still going to be a whole shit ton of characters that you're not gonna know how to play, right? There's 182 characters that we are getting from this game on release and how are you going to know how to play all 182 characters from the first day? Like, it's just impossible. Some of these characters have never even been in Tekaichi before and the only way that it was in the game was because of the fact that people modded it and added their own, you know, customization to what they think it would be like in that game but what I'm trying to say here is no matter how much you try to prepare for this game there's really no way of saying that you are prepared for it because there's just gonna be so much different things that is going to be new to you and that's exactly how I'm personally going into this game you know I've thought about making a video like spending 24 hours trying to learn everything about Tenkaichi because I haven't really actually played this game at least on a competitive level I wouldn't even really say that because around the time I was actually playing this game was well one I was a young little kid so therefore I didn't really understand what I was doing other than just button inputs and button mashing against my cousins because I wanted to win so yeah it's just been a really long time since I've really just learned about the game I mean I made like one or two videos on this channel with the whole uh, mods just to check it out but that's about it guys I've really have not played it at all and I think that's the perfect way to go into this game because if you're like me who hasn't done that for a while and also hasn't really been caught up with like all the Dragon Ball stories you know it's been a while since I've watched anything Dragon Ball I still have not even watched the Dragon Ball Heroes movie 
I'm a whole Gohan fan here, and the only thing that I seen was his whole power-up stage, and that's about it. I don't even know anything about the actual movie and what happened, so that's how far behind I am. But I'm going into this game knowing that, and I want to experience all of this over again through the story through the what ifs you know through the experience of just playing this game with the whole community involved like i think that will be way more rewarding as far as like my experience for the game than anything else because at the end of the day i can sit here and try to be the best player out there but chances are it's not gonna happen chances are i won't even make it into the top 10 and that's not what i'm about i've never been about that yes i like competing you know I like winning, but that's not the goal for me to focus on when I'm playing this game and especially making content for you guys on this channel. I just want to go ahead, go into this game, experience everything new about it, just be bedazzled about it, and have fun at the end of the day. But listen, I'm not saying all of this to knock out anybody who's been doing that, like who's been preparing for this and that. Listen, everybody has their own way of enjoying their games. I'm just saying that I think that's not the right way to go about it just because you're just stressing yourself a lot and putting a lot of pressure on yourself for no real reason, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people are still gonna do the same thing that you're doing right now, just a little bit later. Everyone's still gonna have to learn, you know, the basics of this new Sparky Zero and how it works because timing is different and maybe some inputs are different. So there's still a little bit of a learning curve there and as much as you are knowledgeable about it, you're still gonna learn something new. But before this video becomes something that I keep repeating myself on the same topic, I thought it would be a cool idea for us to just go ahead and go on the modded version of Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and enjoy it for one last time because after this, you know, we're not probably going to ever go back to this unless it's like 20 years from now. Maybe dragged it a little bit, but you know, like 5-10 years down the line from now. Because you have Sparky Zero, like the whole point of the Budokai Tenkaichi 4 mod was to bring all these new characters that came from the story and use them and you know just make it as like what if this game released right now this is the best thing that we would have now we actually have the game so there's no reason to be going back to it at least that's what i think but i digress everyone has their differences so you know what let's go ahead and load up the game and i'm gonna go ahead and make the computer fight against itself we'll do a little bit of a what if scenario and what better way to start off than putting our dear kaba here against go Vegeta. You know, I seen the meme guys. I'm still a little bit somewhat cultured about Dragon Ball and um, It's just hilarious to see like a lot of people are actually upset about the fact that they think that this is something real Like people actually think that people are serious about Kaba being able to beat Gogeta But I'm gonna leave it to the Budokai Tenkaichi emulator to decide that for us right now So we got the two computers going up against each other Find my very best Yes, you will, Kaba. Oh, <laughs> that's Vegeta talking right there. So, let's see what are they gonna hit. Damn! Already a meteor explosion gave Kaba no room. He just said, "Nah, you're gonna eat this already." Listen, guys, I cannot wait to see the whole "What If" mode on this game. Like, like I haven't watched anything other than the trailers and the gameplay showcase for the new Sparky Zero. I've tried to stay away from like. All the exclusive gameplay footage that people were getting and stuff. By the way, shout out to Gopku because I'm most likely going to be using his footage uh, through that whole rant that I was doing earlier as the background. But um, yeah, I try to stay away from uh, as much as the, the exclusive footage that was released because I just, like I said, I want to go into this fresh. I want to be completely like surprised by all the things. Ooh, Gallic Cannon. Okay, <coughs> sorry, what's happening to me here? Can't even talk. Another Gallic Cannon. Alright. So, are we going to see Kaba go Super Saiyan here? Oh, 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 the clashes. Okay. Kaba ended up coming out on that one. He's just going to keep spamming Gogeta with the Gallic Cannon. But Gogeta said, nah, you're going to get punished now with this Soul Punisher. And so far, it seems like Gogeta now has the upper hand. Oh, Super Saiyan 2 coming i i'm not sure if they make him go straight to super saiyan 2 in this if i'm not mistaken because uh he did go super saiyan in the uh anime and then he went super saiyan 2 you know thanks to vegeta his mentor his father 
Vegeta was the dad to this guy that he should have been to freaking tr Trunks. Ooh, okay, there we go. We got Super Saiyan 2 right off the bat. Oh, oh, <laughs> the freaking dodges, man. Okay, so Kaba looking like he's about to make a nice comeback here. But yeah, uh, go back to what I was saying. You know, it's so funny to see how uh, Vegeta saw himself in Kaba. And he was just like, all right, now I'm going to really be a real dad to you. Forget about the son that I actually have. You're going to be the pride that I have in me. And, oh, okay. Uh, Kaba's fighting for his life here. Literally, he's almost about to be erased from this match. Gogeta's not too far off from being in the end zone for his life as well. Will he end him with the Soul Punisher? Ooh. And it's game over. So, according to the Budokai Tenkaichi 4 mod, guys, Kaba is a loser. But I still got one more that I want to check out. So we got to go ahead and do the literal preview of this game that they've been marketing the crap out of. Dragon Ball Super Broly against Ultra Instinct Goku. I mean, that would be a matchup everybody also wants to see. And I guess we'll go ahead and do it in the glaciers. You know, try to make it uh, a little bit canon to the movie, I guess. Even though he wasn't Ultra Instinct. I mean, listen, guys. This is going to be the last time we're seeing PS2 graphics. Can you imagine how a map like this is going to look? Destroy you with Ultra Instinct. I should be able to take you on my own. Let's go! Alright, so here we go. Who's gonna come out on top? Let me know down in the comments, guys, before the match is over. So we got Ultra Instant Goku off to a great start. He's throwing Broly around like his bitch. Okay. Broly has no answer so far. Supreme Kamehameha. Okay, dude, damn. Already deleted a whole life bar from this guy. Ultra Instinct is not playing. He he literally was perfect for one point right there. Like, he was just dodging everything, not letting Broly get a hit on him. And uh, now Broly's coming back and literally bitch slapping him around. He's like, ah, you thought you had an edge on me, right? Uh, well, here we go. Our first transformation. Berserk Super Saiyan Broly. And he completely missed all of that. Ultra Instinct wasn't even phased by that at all. Okay. Got some hits in there. I mean, this dude just keeps blasting Kamehameha's in your face. Like, are you going to just sit there and take it like Kefla? This is insane, Broly. You're supposed to be the ultimate Saiyan. The legendary Saiyan out there. I think he heard me, guys. Or not. Ultra Instinct dude is insane right now. He is just showcasing the fact that you cannot touch this man. No matter if you're a legendary ultimate saiyan or whatever they call you. He's just gonna bitch you around. <laughs> you know, it's just so funny how we went from having like these massive brawlic transformations to like these nice slim forms. But just being like really effective with every move that they throw. I mean, you just got to think about all the choreography that goes behind these fight scenes. I mean, that's the one thing that I've always loved about Dragon Ball. Like, Dragon Ball fights will always be one of the best, right? I mean, if I'm being honest, me personally now, like, as I got older, I mostly watch Dragon Ball for these fights and, you know, the transformations and everything as opposed to the story. Like, the story's good, but, you know, it, it's not really, like, a hands down like deep story that's going on here you know it's just goku trying to save the world with his friends and you know everybody's just trying to keep up they got all these crazy enemies broly was just literally no match for ultra instant goku man i think he only got one bar off this guy and that's it what's happening here why was we marketing this bandai like this is what y'all wanted to see all right so we'll go ahead and do one more because that was a little shorter than i expected so one last matchup that i do want to see especially in the what if is this matchup right here beast gohan against ultra instinct goku i mean i cannot wait to see this animated guys or just the what if that the community is going to come up with like father versus son i can't even say master versus apprentice because that's piccolo and gohan there 
but I gotta watch that movie, man. I feel like I'm missing out on, you know, a lot of things that were shown in that. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take it back to the Kame house where Gohan first got abducted and he didn't even know what was going on. So here it is. Can you imagine this? Like, we just take it back to where it all started. I feel like every anime ends like that somehow. Like, you just go back to where it all started. Right, and you can just throw it down one last time, you know, Naruto and Sasuke did that at the whole, uh, uh, head statues, uh, I forgot what it was called. That would be cool to see, but anyways, alright, seems like a pretty even matchup so far. Uh, I should have picked his purple suit, I don't know why we have the, uh, regular orange outfit on right now. Okay, already with the clashes. Seems like Ultra Instinct Goku's gonna be struggling a little bit here, cause damn, damn! He said, weave this! How you weaving all of that with that big ass spiky hair, bro? So they're charging up. Um, I don't know what he threw at him there. I want to see a nice ultimate going on in this one, you know? Can, can we see that happening? Are you? Are, is, is this game trying to tell me that Beast Gohan is stronger than Ultra Instinct Goku? I already know what some of y'all have to say about that in the comments. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Gohan super fan. But I, I myself know that that's not possible. Like, Goku's obviously the strongest one in the verse. Until Ultra Ego Vegeta comes through. But that's another story for another time, right? Gotta let it happen. We gotta, we gotta see what, what happens there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, guys. I just know about these transformations. But I don't really read up on the manga or anything. So, like, the last thing I seen was... The whole uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. I think that was after the whole power of a tournament. So, yeah, that, that's like pretty much the last thing I know as long uh, as far as storyline. Ultra Instant Goku's making a comeback. Okay, we got uh, body armor all destroyed here. By the way, the uh, black under armor outfit that Gohan has in the game. There you go. That's the ultimate I want to see. Special Beam Cannon. I thought it was called Special Beam Kamehameha. Maybe I was wrong, but, well, this is a mod. I don't even know what I'm saying. Dude, what happened? I was here talking, and, and all of a sudden, Ultra Instinct just gave this man a ass whooping. He said, remember who's your daddy? Bro just got pampered. Anyways, <laughs> I think we had enough of this uh, little what if X speculations, you know. Clearly, this game has its uh, opinions on who it thinks it's stronger, and it's always going to be Goku at the end. But let me know down in the comments what are you guys mostly excited for in Sparking Zero. What is it that you guys are going to be playing first, you know? I made a poll on my channel saying what is it that you guys want to see first, but since, like I said, I haven't really watched anything about what to expect for this game and like all the spoilers, I'm starting to find out that, you know, there's going to be a thing where you have to unlock characters, so it seems like I have no choice but to play the story mode first if I want to be able to use uh, the rest of the characters in the roster aside from what we get in the beginning. So yeah, that's probably going to be one of the first things that are uploaded on Monday. So smash the subscribe button if you guys want to see that. Stay tuned. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video. But I think I chatted enough today. I don't even know how I did this. Uh, this is why my girlfriend says I should shut up sometimes because I can't. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.